archaeology is usually subdivided into four fields, cultural, physical, linguistic, and archaeology. While the research styles and research produced differ among the four subfields, many anthropologists do public or engaged anthropology. Public and engaged anthropology is a collaborative, neutral, reflexive, practical, and value-driven form of research which seeks to not only research the community, but involve them as equal research partners. There is no one type of engagement, but can include activism, teaching, advocacy, and CPBR, or any combination of those. At the University of Massachusetts Amherst, Dr. Krista Harper does engaged anthropology while using digital methods. Dr. Krista Harper uses visual anthropology to explore activism in both Hungary and the Pioneer Valley. So what is visual anthropology? It has a multitude of definitions and practices. It can range from things like digital storytelling, where the camera is in the hand of the community member, to cultural reconstruction, a type of savage anthropology. It can be film or pictures, and can have an artistic feel to it or not. According to Dr. Harper and Dr. Gubrium of UMass Amherst, Digital methods provide another way for the natives to talk back to scholars. Because of their view, the visual anthropology is a community-based participatory research paradigm. Questions remain on how to train anthropologists to use and analyze vis visual methods, as well as the role visual methods can play in the academy. Dr. Krista Harper provides a beautiful example of how, the, of how to combine visual methods with engaged anthropology and more traditional anthropology work. I would say that most of the different projects that I've done are linked together um, by uh, my interest in understanding how people uh, live in urban environments and how they try to change them. It depends on the project and um, uh, in my earliest research, uh, the work that I did in my dissertation, I really was doing uh, I, I studied Hungarian environmental activists after 1989, and in that project I was uh, studying activism, um, but coming in as a fairly traditional ethnographer. And uh, in the projects that I've done since then, I have taken on much more uh, an increasingly collaborative or participatory action research approach to my, my projects. Um, first with a Hungarian uh, Roma community organization in northern Hungary and um, more recently with community organizations in Western Mass and in um, Portugal where I'm now doing work with an Urban Gardeners uh, Association. Well, um, I would say that, you know, one of the tricks and one of the most uh, theoretically and methodologically tricky parts of anthropology in the 21st century or doing ethnography in the 21st century is figuring out what a community is and defining um, how are you going to study cultural phenomena, how are you going to study a community in terms of how do you define it in the first place. In general, um, ethnographers today have to figure out different angles and ways to approach um, the field, and part of that is uh, doing the sort of patient ethnographic work of finding out how people um, define themselves. You have to do a lot of ethnographic footwork before you can have an entry point into participatory action research. Usually it requires a lot of footwork to know what's the appropriate way to enter. I feel like I've had a very um, positive uh, reception working in uh, participatory visual and digital research. Part of that is because I'm at UMass Anthropology and I was preceded here um, by uh, a number of colleagues who were already doing engaged research. I actually learned, uh, uh, the first time I heard about participatory action research was from Professor Julie Hemet uh, here in my department. And so in, in many ways, 
this was um, kind of a developing a um, you know an intellectual perspective and an approach to anthropology and conversation with people. The other part of my life here at UMass is that I'm in the Center for Public Policy and Administration, and um, that has been a wonderful opportunity to push myself to think about policy implications, to work with students who see themselves primarily as um, uh, social change uh, makers and um, policy makers um, rather than uh, with a more academic focus. I feel like all of those aspects of, um, of working with people who are engaged in public policy and being in a, in a department that has really encouraged participatory approaches has been great. I also feel like anthropology as a discipline is becoming much more uh, interested and receptive and excited about uh, participatory visual methods, participatory um, digital approaches like uh, geographic information systems or um, the use of social media. And a lot of that has to do with um, uh, calls to engage with the public in a different way and to communicate with broader audiences. I think that all of these approaches um, are great in that they can allow us to not only produce high quality ethnographic and social scientific research, but it also allows us to do that in a way where we can communicate uh, more easily with the people who we are doing research with. Anthropology is very relevant for public policy because policymakers and people who would like to change the world, uh, which usually involves some kind of policy shift, um, need to understand uh, what is going on in a diverse, pluralistic uh, society. And one of the only ways we can do that is by going out there and finding out how people think about issues and concerns and how they, what, what things they think of as problems or as assets or values that they'd like to conserve. So um, anthropology is a natural fit with uh, public policy. One of my research partners, uh, Catherine Sands, likes to talk about big P policy and little p policy. And she talks about big P policy is the farm bill and little p policy are uh, more small, subtle, institutional changes that a lot of policy is actually little p policy. In terms of my own experiences of projects that allowed me to get into big P policy, um, the project that I did in Northern Hungary in collaboration with uh, Roma community organizers um, where we were engaging youth in studying environmental justice issues allowed us to have a set of um, visual materials and uh, perspectives that we were invited to share with the UN Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights in Geneva as they were reviewing Hungary's uh, human rights record. So that was something where we were able to gain access to some very high level policy makers. And at our photo exhibitions in Hungary, we were also able to invite people from the environmental ministry and environmental lawyers and members of uh, national level environmental and civil rights uh, activist groups to engage in conversation with uh, members of this small local organization. In terms of little p policy, um, ethnography and participatory methods can create openings for um, small institutional changes um, and transformations. In another project doing research um, with the Nuestras Raices youth group in Holyoke, 
uh, youth from the group documented the path of food from uh, the farm to the school warehouse, the cafeteria, and finally their lunch plates. And this research process um, allowed them to communicate with the school committee and with the school food contractors that they wanted to have a voice in um, decisions that were being made about uh, school food, what kinds of uh, procurement arrangements the, uh, the school district could try to encourage so that they could get more local food, more fresh food, culturally appropriate foods into the, uh, into the cafeteria. Anthropology, and in particular ethnography, is research that we do with other human beings, and we're in an ethical relationship with other human beings. So there are ethical issues all the way down, from the way that you define problems and how you define uh, research questions, uh, to figuring out how to present whatever you learn to the broader public or the communities that you study. I would say that I've become even more aware of ethical issues as I've taken on uh, participatory visual research. It makes you think much more carefully about um, who, how, how the project is defined, who gets to control representations, um, particularly since it can be a physical object or a digital object that uh, circulates and is accessible on the web. And with these methods, you're, you're always communicating to a broader uh, community and, and it means you have to think a lot harder and be more careful and consult other people more. Well, defining success, um, defining success uh, on a project, it, you know, there's there are the, all the traditional academic uh, markers of success in terms of publishing peer-reviewed articles or getting a book or something like that. But um, with participatory action research um, and ethnography that is taking this more engaged approach, we start out by defining our goals in collaboration with our research partners. We also hope for some kind of broader impacts um, than simply writing you know, an academic monograph. Instead, you're wanting to have, uh, you know, it could be that your, your, one of the goals could be that the research process itself uh, allows for learning uh, alongside and, and in the community where, or it could be creating documentation that you can use as an anthropologist, but they can use as an organization. Finding success is, you know, you're, you're looking at a lot more different layers. Um, in community-based and participatory research, um, a lot of the process doesn't feel successful. It feels um, uncertain, or I'm not sure if I'm doing things right, or we're excited about what we're doing, but I'm not sure how it will come out as an end product. Um, in Holyoke, where youth were studying the school food system was successful for me um, because uh, I learned a lot about youth and how they were engaging with uh, learning about policies and learning about how to try to change things um, alongside uh, basic facts about the school food supply chain. For the youth, they started having a sense of accomplishment. They developed confidence in their own ability to speak for themselves. And, um, and eventually, some of them gained a place at the table um, in terms of being invited to join a school food task force. For the organization, engaging the, the youth uh, and building their capacity as um, citizens and as activists. At the time of the project, we had a presentation 
to the school committee, and the youth felt like it was a big flop. So in the process, it doesn't always feel like a success. But in hindsight, um, we are able to see uh, the progress that they made and the skills that they developed. And we also have these beautiful photographs and documentation that they have now used presenting at uh, you know, food justice conferences. You know, sometimes it takes a while for the, the seeds to sort of start uh, taking root. few pieces of advice. One is don't be afraid to try something new, but when you do, you need to be patient. You need to be patient in terms of gaining an entry point or a way of connecting. Um, you can't just show up and say, hi, I'm here to do community-based participatory action research, <laughs> you know, take me up. Um, you have to be patient in establishing those relationships and you may have to be patient during the process because it, it doesn't feel successful at every moment.